In a world of blockbuster movies, there's another dimension. The dimension of schlock cinema. Join us at Beautiful Disasters on a journey into the fringe territory of B-movie abandon. We review the flicks that are forgotten or underappreciated to give them a proper place in the annals of celluloid history. I'm the Groots. F you, Hunter. Your guides at Beautiful Disasters. Come along with us for a fun ride. May, May the, the schlock be with you. you. and opinions expressed on Geek Father are those of the panelists and not those of the Geeks Under the Influence Network, their affiliates, or sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. This is for the parents and not for the kiddies. Geek Fire! Can you try one more time? Say no. Geek Father real loud. Geek Fire way out! Ugh, record me. Oh, well, hey, guys. Going to be recording all night, and if you're hearing the way this conversation is starting, that means you are back with the Geek Fathers. That's yeah. right. Bringing all the trials and tribulations of being a geeky parent <clears throat> from this world to your ears, your brain, letting you all absorb it here, and helping bring this to you is, of course, myself, Scotty P. Thank you for joining us, and my partner in crime, my cohort, co-host, however you want to put it, Mr. Kyle Smash. What's up? What's happening? Uh, that was out of context, by the way, for everybody jumping in. That that was way out of context. <laughs> Taken out of context, that, for that, sure. Well, and, and that's why we do this show for the adults, <laughs> not the kiddies. That's fair. So that's fair. jokes like that can so, go a flying yeah. and we're good. It's always good to throw a little, you know. Well, disclaimer out there. <laughs> oh yeah, just just to make sure you, you're you're picking up what we're putting yeah. down. Yeah, um, CYA. Yeah, um, cover your ass. Cover your ass. That's <laughs> right, guys. That's office. That's office uh, uh, politics right there. That is very much so. Oh, I hate that. But anyway, really, it's true. Well, even really any hierarchy of power. Oh yeah. Speaking of if that, you, speaking of, we'll we'll get to it. Okay. I'm very excited to talk about it. We're we're well we're we're do talking your, about do your thing. I, well, I'm. I guess I'm doing my thing. We're. I mean, we're getting started here, as always. The Geek Fathers. Uh, we've got plenty of old man tangents to go on. We really should have hit record a little bit earlier, but we do want to make sure we're bringing you the right content at the right time, as well. Because uh, as Smash put it, accidentally. Uh, you know, we definitely want to talk a little bit about Wakanda forever. Wakanda. Wakanda. I don't know how that came out of your mouth like that, but of course we well, actually mean Wakanda I just, forever. Well, you know, sometimes like you're trying to say a word and you just, your tongue, you just tongue-tied. It, just, it yeah. just does not come out right. No, I get it. I yeah. get it. But it was just... There was three oh, other man. versions of it before I got to Wakanda. Oh, yeah. You, you were definitely struggling just yeah. saying Wakanda for, mm. well, for sure and yeah. forever. And it was but... almost like for a short time I was like developing even some sort of like lisp just out of nowhere. You know, Wakanda. Mm. I couldn't say quite cut, say. Cut, cut back on the beers, man. Cut back on what? the beers. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're only on what? number? Maybe number two. I don't even know. I'm not but... even not even a full two. I'm okay, like four we'll see. sips in. Cut back, sir. Maybe it's... <laughs> Rain I know, it in. Look, I know, Rain it in. I know that I'm a lightweight, but I, uh, I'm, you know, I think I'm going to be doing okay. Fair, fair enough. But guys, uh, we've had so much going on. Of course, uh, Smash and I catching up uh, every other week as we do. Uh, hopefully, again, everybody finished out with a great Halloween. Of course, was uh, well at this point a few weeks ago now. Uh, let's see, look, and if I remember the dates, because of course I did not bother checking the dates properly, by the time you hear this one, we will be less than a week away from the great Gobble Gobble Turkey Day, so we'll have a bunch of fun stuff going on there, uh, which of course is always a great start to the holidays, and I'll even start throwing it out there now, I know the way we roll, uh, we don't do the big ones anymore, but if, guys, if you ever feel you know, like you like to have some company, be with some people, whether to actually celebrate the holiday or not, you know, our door, or I'll say our door is open, Smash will be available if need be for stuff, I'm, he's, he's our tech guy, so he's checking something real quick, <coughs> just to throw him under the bus there, mm -hmm. but uh, guys, it's, it's the holiday season, if you, I, I'd rather you be around than not around, let me just put it that way, guys, 
So just if you need anything, of course, the Geek Fathers are here to help any way we can, regardless of what may be going on for you. So that's our little, P I'll say our PSA for the evening uh, for that. But we're, we're basically, uh, by the time you hear this again, we'll be smack dab in the middle of November, ready to go for the rest of the holidays, man. Almost mm -hmm. done with the year. Almost done with the year, 2022. That's right. I we, think, I think uh, thrown mixed in as a Comic-Con. Yes, on the uh, 19th, of on the 19th uh, will be Richmond, Virginia Comic Con at the Richmond Raceway. As always, uh, brought to you by uh, Brett. Uh, honestly, I may not make it this year or this time around. No, no. Yeah, just scheduling wise, the with the wife schedule and some things going on and the kids. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, I will be there if I work it out right. If not, I know you usually plan to be there, and of course, Hobbit and some of the others. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm definitely gonna. I'm definitely gonna. You know, stop by. You know, say hi and you know, and throw some 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 cool uh, things out there to anybody that shows up. Maybe a little love and some moral support, which is there always you go. always the best thing. Absolutely, yes, we love the moral support, guys. So uh, again, November nineteenth, Richmond Raceway for the Richmond Virginia Comic Con. Uh, GUI will be there, of course. Banners flying along with a bunch of other great like artists, retailers, everybody. Everybody there is. I was about to say, I don't think we've really come across at, at Richmond Comic Con anybody. No, there, there's been no assholes. I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, would, there, I there say, could be, but we uh, the interaction with them is very limited. In terms of, in terms of on that side, for for sure, absolutely. I think every, most if anyone has ever come up cross that comes through the table uh, and talks to us has always been pretty nice and right. you know, pretty cool. I mean, it's a. It's an atmosphere where everybody really has similar interests. That's why they're there. You know, the, the things that yeah. they love and they're passionate about, they come and they get to express that. And yep. it's, it's, uh, you know, but, it's but a it's safe also, family atmosphere. It's, I love absolutely. it. I was, I always love the smaller venues. Too. Well, yeah, I was about to say, it's also just more regional, which is a little bit more like home. You have more people where even though they, they may not be in Virginia, but they, they are close. Yeah. Like, real easy to find some great um, indie comics, mm -hmm. uh, different toys, different all sorts of just fun knickknacks. And again, with Christmas coming up and various holidays in between, great time to also find some of those special little gifts, things like that as well, if, if, if you're ever so inclined. Yeah, that's right. So, But Richmond v uh, VA Comic Con, November 19th, uh, GUI will be representing there regardless of how many of us are at the table. Well, going back to Wakanda Forever... Uh, because you, I'm hyped for it. We're recording before it's actually released, so neither of us have been able to see it. No, I know. No. But I am super stoked, like trying mm -hmm. to arrange a, a definitely a date night to go check this movie out. I don't want to wait. No, I mean, it's, so, yeah, you can. I mean, I think you can. You can get tickets if it, it's possible. Oh yeah, tickets, tickets are available tonight. now. Yeah, absolutely. It is a hefty watch. Apparently, apparently, that we're talking about almost three hours. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm sure you know, and I I can imagine, uh, and Brian uh, Kogler while making this, it had to be a substantial story. Unfortunately, I am not one of those people that is deterred by the time frame, and it that, of course that depends on the on the. Are content. you talking about the time of the movie run or how long a movie runs? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And no, me neither. The time frame. Yeah. So like, I am not somebody that I don't personally care. If it's a good story and you have that much content, absolutely put it right. in there as a full story. Well, I mean, and because what was it? I think Stephen was bringing it up on our uh, group message that we have for GUI, being like, whoa, I wasn't expecting two hours and 50 minutes or whatever it's supposed to yeah. be. But I also sat there, I thought about it. I was like, well, not only are you having to transition because uh, rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. Who, well, you, well, who you have to you transition. You have to tell that first. You have to tell that story. Tell that. And, we know and, someone is picking up the yeah. mantle, which we have a pretty good idea who, based on the recent trailer. But I'll still wait to actually watch it. We're, we're not here to throw out theories. That well, no, bullshit, we're not. <laughs> The show, what the fuck do you think the show is called? I know. Uh, right? No. It's, it's, I, I love this twist of that into no. you. It's obviously, it's, it's obviously Shuri. Shuri. Yeah, it's it's going to be Shuri. I mean. There's, I, there's, I can't, there, I don't know who else it would be. It doesn't make any, any sense well, for they, a little Ironheart to be a fucking Black Panther. Although, she could be whatever she wants in the movie. It's probably still well, going to be great. Well, they talked about just, various other characters just because they, they had built them up so much to where... 
they may not follow com- because not the movies haven't always followed comic book accuracy. So and have still worked for story. No. So, yes, I understand. I'm, but I'm aware that I'm, changes are going to be made. But but I, I think we're about we'll say ninety nine percent sure it's going to be Shuri taking up the mantle. Yeah. No. So. But then, not only do you have that crossover story or change of a uh, mantle, mm-hmm. but you also are introducing two bigger names that are going to be part of the MCU going forward. Probably more than that by the well, end, end credits. Uh, two two main ones, I, I should say, of course, which you mentioned, Ironheart, which, of course, they're going back and forth about Armor Wars, which uh, she'll definitely be involved with. And, of course, the long-awaited... Namor, mm-hmm. the Submariner, is finally being introduced into the MCU. And fucking wings on so, his feet. And, and wings and you, on his goddamn feet. And you know what? It looks good. See, that that was always my like, worry, is, is those little detail things, and even the way they have him... Hopping. Well, yeah, it's not just flying or fluttering around. They, it's the way the comic books actually had it, where he, it's like he's having to hop, is the way his, his mm-hmm. flying powers work, or whatever it may be. Yeah. So I, it I'm looks not, good. Listen, I was never a huge follower of his stories uh, and what I knew of him or whatever I came across in comics. I, I don't remember ever being like, I didn't really care about the character. I always thought it was just a, although he came before Aquaman, uh, and I wasn't a fan of Aquaman either. I was like, I don't give a fuck and about And this coming from our, our, our local DC guy. <laughs> Yeah, no, fuck Aquaman. I don't give a shit about Aquaman. Hey, Jason I mean, Momoa. Listen, Jason Momoa just made him tolerable. And hey, I'll it made, take it. It made sense. It makes sense now I'll that he's it. a yes, and he's done well. I I, I, right. I like him as that. But other than that, <laughs> um, someone else did a what's his name did a good job from Smallville. I'm trying to think of his name. He plays on Reacher as well as uh, Titans. And he, and he was yeah, Hawk. he was Hawk and Titans. Um, crap. What is his? You're supposed to be our our Google guy. I know, but uh, you, you're we're, having, in here. we're having technical difficulties tonight. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But it's yeah. just one of those nights. And l- let me say from like seeing him on Smallville to Reacher, I'm like, well, that guy's been doing nothing but lifting weights. That's all he does anymore is lift weights. Yeah. And he's already been a tall. He's tall, too. What is he, like 6'2", six, 6'3"? Six, Alan Rickson. Alan Rickson, that's right, that's right. Alan Rickson, and he, yeah, plays the shit out of the role. I mean, he's always been. He's I've always oh. enjoyed him. He was even good on Smallville. He was because he he played the the hothead, but also could be the team player. Yes, which it, which was totally Aquaman. You know, the listen, whole, like, Aquaman always just kind of sucks. He's fine well, in the Injustice games, but other than that, I've never really had an issue a, a thing with either one of them. I do like the Atlantis aspect. I I appreciate how they finally gave him full use of his power. Like he, in the comics, um, how they started improving him to to try to make him a badass was basically he was choking out Superman with water. Yeah. Like he he was using his powers appropriately, I guess is the best way to put it. Not just, hey, I need a big fish. Well, I'll tell you, I think uh, Ryan Kogler is an amazing director. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, and he's a good storyteller. Uh, so I think it's going to make sense. And I think that probably you're going to have a, a next generation of people, or even the older generation like myself, actually give a shit about the Submariner. Sure. Uh, and like him. Well, and I do like, I think they gave them a different background. So this one's Aztec. Yeah, it's it's more Mayan or Aztec. Was I can't it, remember which Aztec? one. Uh, I probably you're probably right. More Aztec. I can't. I just can't remember. It might have been Mayan because before he he, he was definitely like it was. I want to say originally it was just straight up like Atlantis or whatever because he was around like he was very very early in the comics and then uh, how he actually got big again was uh, he became. A big villain for the Fantastic Four. Yes, which which yeah. I'm sure they're going to use this movie as no promises. I, I guarantee I don't know anything before you guys do. That's probably going to be one of the extra scenes around credit time. If they're using Namor, mm-hmm. that's going to be their MCU's big introduction for Fantastic Four. Almost guarantee it. Well, you know, it's funny is that while as I go through these the details of, of trying to I'm tr- was trying to look for some specific information. Yeah, and then I see something pop under pop up under Collider. Uh, Wakanda Forever's Namor is just as strong as Thor and Hulk. Yeah, and oh, I've, I, I've actually seen part of that article. Yeah, yeah, I have not read that article. I will now. That's on my checklist. Right? 
You and should. So that's it's, on my my, co- Clyde, my smash and, list, if you will. Cl- Collider also has some good writers for them too. Like they they I Collider's I, I one like, of my go to. I like Collider. Uh, Collider. I've never. Yeah. I've, they were also. I mean, they've been around for a long time. They, oh, they were, easily they, 10, they, 15 plus years. Yeah. They've been my, they were my source for a really long time. Yeah. I was about to say, I think I exclusively used them for definitely a few years, especially in the early days of MCU and mm-hmm. um, some other things going on. Like when fan theories were definitely thrown around a lot more with less actual facts. But uh, yeah. And so to go back to the, and I was looking for specific information on where he, the background of him. Uh, and they call him uh, 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 Cuckoo Khan, meaning the feathered serpent god. Uh, more commonly, is he's called Neymar. Uh, so I was trying to look where that specific background is because I think it's different. They changed it from the comics. Oh, yeah. I think it yeah, was just yeah. Atlantis in the comics. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And this one is more, uh, is, yeah, it's, it's more like it's Mayan or Aztec related. Mm-hmm. Uh, by hence the name, but I'm I'm excited to well, see lo- it. lost civilization, oh, lost like, civilization, sure, yeah, like went underwater, and right. then apparently he was born. It was, I mean, it's literally, it is obviously DC stole that. Oh, without fucking, a doubt. I mean, know. well, but but also back in the day, a little bit of history for all you younger folk who don't know is when it was just comic books. Writers jumped back and forth so much between Marvel and DC in the early days. They were literally right across the street from each other in New York. Yeah. And they admit, like, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and anybody else who's worked for either company in the past since the beginning almost, and that is still alive, will tell you, oh, yeah, we totally had this idea, and I told so-and-so, and he said, well, cool, I'm going to write up my own character then. Like, they would have drinks together and talk about characters they created and, and blatantly just sat there and go, I'm going to do it, but I bet you mine can be better than yours. Yeah. And that's how, why there's so many similarities. Why the, there's also things like where DC had, and I love these uh, comics, where DC actually had Stan Lee recreate certain characters and um, do some one-off issues. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's like a Stan Lee Superman um, well, Batman his, sort of thing. His type version of it, he recreating the character, yes, but using it based on Superman, Green Lantern, Batman, yeah. and a couple others. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I never knew that. Oh, dude, that that was I like I, I think I, I want to say early nineties. I wonder if that's. I wonder I, if that's I, worth. I, ha- I have a bunch of them. I, I'll, I'll I'll double check the long boxes and uh, let you borrow. Well, no, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, and let me borrow them. I'm gonna. Price them out for you, buddy. No, uh, <laughs> I will get them back because if anything, something like that is my kids' college tuition. <laughs> if you let me broker the deals for you, pal, and I'll make sure that I'll, I'll gonna... let you continue being a geek father. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Oh well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's yeah. great. <laughs> but no, back to the baby. Like I'm, sorry. I'm pretty I had sure to give my old man laugh a couple. I'm times. pretty sure it's going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be good. I know that reviews have been good, although I have not read them uh, specifically. But I've had I've well, read a couple of articles, and then uh, and they've all pretty much said the same thing. It's just like it's this apparently is supposed to end phase four or phase where are we at phase four. This is supposed is, to end phase. Is this four. technically ending phase four? I, I guess because it got pushed out with. Yeah. Uh, Chadwick Boseman passing away, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you have to end up. You have to end the phases on a on a big note in order to kick it off. Well, yeah. And yeah. I think Ant Man probably kicks off. Uh, five yeah, with Quantum Mania. With Quantum Mania. Yeah. yeah, that's. What I it, think that's the timeline, if I remember correctly, from yeah. From if, if you go back and like research the San Diego Comic Con, I mean, well, the timelines are just plastered still all over online about well, yeah. where the phases are and. Everything in between, so uh, I'm excited for that. Quantum Mania looks amazing. So I, this yes. has got to this has got to introduce this has got to lead into that somehow. Well, that's why I think also because of Fantastic Four is supposed to be a big kickoff with I don't know necessarily Phase Five. I but think they kick off Phase Six, po- possibly. Yeah, because there's only six phases, is there? Yeah, something like that. I mean, they have the next what two to three years planned out for the most part. Well, I think it, it's uh, phase six gets kicked off with uh, Fantastic Four and then ends with Secret Wars. 
And that yeah. is, it's the Kang Dynasty, it ends with Secret Wars. And those are the two ending Avengers movies. Right, like those, they did with him, Infinity War and uh, Endgame. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and I think, look, once they do that, the only other direction to go is just to, I don't know where else you're going to go with it, because isn't that pretty significant that that's pretty much like ending worlds? Uh, ending um, universes. Secret Wars? Yeah, it's, uh, yes. It's, it's almost yes. like the Infinite uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth events. Yes. Brings everything down to a Yeah, one. but it, but but like everything comic book wise, every you, you there no one dies. There is always a way to bring them right. back. Well, of course. Of course. So it's it's just a matter of what story arc they feel after after Secret Wars and the Kang Dynasty and everything when multiple worlds implode or however they decide to end it, whether it's on comic book accurate or they kind of do their own thing with it. First off, what's going to be left? Is it going to be certain characters and they continue to introduce new characters? And what story arc do they decide to follow up with next? Because you know Marvel is already on the drawing board about where to kick off after Phase 6. I don't... I mean, if that's as big as it's supposed to be and uh, and universe-altering, I don't know where else you could go except for what, like just have cosmic beings fighting each other there are still older story arcs you could follow but don't forget in the midst of all this you're also introducing the mutants now that's true and there were plenty of story you're arcs gonna, you're where... gonna i know you're, you're gonna need them for secret wars and kang dynasty oh yeah absolutely especially wolverine well and, and if spoilers if you haven't seen miss marvel yet they already alluded to one of the changes that they did for miss marvel was a possible she's actually um, possibly a mutant. Yes. Good. Well, it's just because so, she has a mutant gene. Right. And then they show the article uh, in She Hulk talking about the man with claws in a bar fight. So, That's yeah, they, right. they've yeah. set the stage for obvi- Doctor Strange obviously set the stage for that clearly. Oh, we're like, yes. hey, listen, yes. you know, we're going to play you the music. You know, we're, we're literally, we're sticking, you know, X Men up your ass. Like, oh, yeah. They gave us Patrick go. Stewart. Like, straight Stuart. up. Stuart. 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 Is that who you is know, that? Hey, you can have Patrick your accent. Stott? I don't have my accent. Okay. okay. Patrick Stott. Pa- Patrick Stott. Stott. Ah. Sir, Sir Pat Stu, as he is online. Sir Pat Stu. I yes. love that man. He's a fucking national. That dude is. He's an international treasure. Damn right. International damn right. treasure. And guys, of course, uh, one thing I would recommend because sometimes certain ages, obviously, the storylines with the MCU gets a little. I don't want to say out of control. Well, Deadpool totally three, good. when it comes out. Hey, don't take your kid unless right. I mean, or take your kid. That I no one's going to make but that that's decision for you. you. That right. is on you. But whatever repercussions come from that, uh, you will. It'll quickly manifest themselves. But I was, I was definitely going to say, as 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 we do, feel free to like for especially a lot of the kids where they can't always see the movies, or you wait until Disney Plus to double check some stuff. Yeah, guys, get them into the comics. There's nothing wrong with reading comics as part of literacy. No. Absolutely. Like, and and this is where you can, like, and this is a great history teaching thing on, like, where these characters actually come from. Now, I will like, I will say, in terms of the, uh, parenting, when it comes to my kid, whenever, growing up, like, she liked getting into the comics I do have. Yeah. She she still does. Like, she loves Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's, she gets it every time, and she'll, like, read it. And I'm like... Right, right. Because I'll tell her, pick something and read it. And so, like, she'll pick that. It's a good go-to. Yeah, she and she definitely has leans more towards comic style or picture related books. Sure, yeah. Uh and I think most people probably do. Uh every now and then though, I tell her like it's probably pick a book that's a little more difficult and and you let your imagination do all the work. The, yeah, those those conversations have definitely been had in our house as well where like, it's like no, you can, it's never feel bad for going back to your go-to multiple times. Yeah. But you still got to pick up that new book or that maybe that next level yeah. book, so to say. You it's, still got to continue growing, yeah. you know. In it's that. all literature. It's all. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's how you kind of absorb it. And I think comic books and, you know, or, you know, like uh, uh, other style graphic novel books. Sure. You yeah. absorb differently than you, yeah. I think that you do if you're reading, you know, like, uh, like, right. So I just got. Uh, uh, good omens. Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett's Good Omens, the book. Yeah, because I like the show so much, and I had not read the book, so I got the book, and I only even just kind of like the smell of it. It just you can't beat the smell of like a good book, absolutely, and like of the pages, and I can and I can look Hard at copy. it. Hard copy. 
It's a hard, hard copy. copy. Yeah. Yes, well, good yes. hard copy. This is not the hard copy, unfortunately. Uh, well, I say hard I copy as in even paper, not 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 hardback. Oh, or, hard copy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hard, yeah. Like, yeah. As opposed to like a flash drive, or, right? Or like yeah, yeah an e-reader or, or whatever. An e-reader. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hard copy is is the real deal, and the smell is great. But I go, you know, I could flip through the pages. Like, there's not one single picture. Now, I thought to myself, is that really going to matter? Since I've seen the show, I can now kind of put. Faces and voices to it, so right. I, I kind of cheated there. Um, so I'm not using this as an example with my kid, but just any other book. Uh, this just that feeling of opening a book and letting your imagination run wild as you read it, and kind of do all the heavy lifting. Yeah, I mean, even then, I'm still imagining what it looks like, but I'm letting it do all the heavy lifting. Or like with uh, Logan, with uh, he's read some of the Harry Potter books. Now, over just gradually over time, and he's seen, I think, just about, I think he's seen all the movies. So it's interesting to see how he reacts to, or how he'll talk about, say, one of the earlier movies now, now that he's read through a book. It's definitely a different viewpoint, which yeah. I think we're very fortunate to have a visual aid these days, but it doesn't have to be used. And it's yeah. really your choice, which would, like, there have been times where I'm glad I watched the movie before I read the book because it, it did kind of help alleviate like even something simple as how certain words are pronounced or how certain things should flow with the story mm -hmm. and it gives you a better understanding without ruining the imagination of what it should be or what it could be so you know it's funny so, there's certain things that i've done the like the opposite on so ready player one i read the book before the movie came out fair, fair. and um and, and usually I'll like I'll watch a movie and go, oh, that's from a book. Uh, da Vinci Code was one of them. I, I'd watch the Da Vinci Code with Tom Hanks, and I was like, oh, that looks cool. So I read the book, and the book's good. Yeah. Uh, and the that was uh, one I haven't done either, really, to tell the truth. The Angels and Demons is better, in my opinion. I think it's a better. I like it better. Yeah. As far as a book goes, but I did the same you're thing. Not, you're not the only person I've heard say that either. So. No, I have, well, I did the same thing with. Um, uh, 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 I did the same thing with uh, Ready Player One. Trying right. like I have an old man brain fart there. Exactly. I'm, I'm Ready Player One, and so what I found was like I, obviously when I go in, Harry Potter was one that I saw the movie first. You yeah. know, uh, with a group of friends, including Hunter. Uh, you know, we'd going out to the theater watching it. Sure, yeah, because yeah, it yeah. looked cool. And so going out to watch, I was like, ah, this is this is pretty cool. And then I got this is what all the hype was about yeah, for years. But even years then, and, I didn't the yeah. second, the third. I didn't actually read a book until like the fourth one. And I was hanging, oh, I still haven't finished reading Harry Potter to be perfectly honest. Uh, but again, like we were talking about earlier, I'm just behind on my reading in general. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even going to say that. But oh well, no, I, I've I've definitely read all the Harry Potters. But I because the movie I saw the movie before, I could put everything in there. Uh, as I've already seen it, the voices, the way people yeah, act yeah. and move, so it was easier to script it out, like to to do that in my mind. When I read Ready Player One, it was totally just in my mind, and I, I thought about that experience afterwards, like which one did I enjoy better? And I'm like, I think that just depends on the day and what the story is. But for me, like I enjoyed the fact that I read Led Ready Player One, then saw the movie, sure, uh, sure, because the movie is a totally different animal. And if I'd went into the expectations of what's in the movie and into the book, I'd have been like, what the fuck is this? I would still sure. enjoy the book, but I would have had a totally skewed kind of perspective of it. Right, so, yeah, it's it's a weird balance, yeah. um, sort of like when you compare parenting, or comparenting, if you will. Oh, well done. Thank you. Well done. Uh, try. Uh, where It just depends on a few things, which uh, as we get uh, towards... Uh, I, Unfortunately, Wait. we have to time limit these things. Wait, are we there yet? Uh, wow, we've been talking for a while. Huh? Yeah, well, it's old man tangents, man. Wow. You know how we do. It's, just the, you know, it's the damn beer. I'll it's, tell you what, that it's, it's this, the beer. This, this just, beer and a half I've had so far. <laughs> it just loosens everything. It's kicking up. my butt, man. Yeah, which, uh, which yeah, we will. We should, I guess, if we're getting down to that time, like you said, get into our little comparing uh, segment, right? Uh, which, you know. We do like to use the memes and different comparisons. Basically, if you were listening to the last episode, this is a fun way where we just sort of remember how people do things differently. And it's fucking hilarious most of the time on the way shit happens. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really all it comes down to. Like, I'll even start off with my first one. And it's not even really a meme. It's just one of those right. where it just sort of tells you. But it, it just sits there and goes, yeah. 
I could see myself doing that. All right. Where, where it's just like... Me, me. Let's do this. All right. Just heard a mom yelling, Theodore. So I hit her with an Alvin. <laughs> no one in that Aldi parking lot <laughs> laughed. I hate it here. And that's the time. See, you laughed at that one. And you would you would have been right there with me yelling Simon as well. Oh, if you heard that in the parking yeah. lot somewhere, yeah. you know, where we would be like, Alvin, Simon, Theodore. Like, yeah. totally would. But, Alvin. Other, but there's totally like some other people where they're just like, the fuck are you talking about, man? That's pretty damn clever. Yeah. I like that. It that's was a solid. I give that one a huge thumbs up. Thumbs up on that one. That one's So, great. all right. Mimi, man. What you got? Well, I don't have a, so for mine is less of a, a meme and more of uh, in the comparing department, which is uh, I read something online and I, they, I saw it in a meme, but I, to look into it deeper was this uh, CNBC uh, pers- like article on the perspective of the four styles of parenting. And the way that they break it down. And, I, oh, and I, they're so, they're, well, there's the, all right, well, I'll just, I'm going to read them just, off to you. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, just spit it out, man. Okay. Let's see what this is. So the four styles of parenting. So they have, uh, they have the, the, the chart they have is essentially responsiveness uh, pointing vertically. Yeah. No special and, pictures or anything, yeah, but. Demandingness uh, uh, going horizontal. Okay. So think of that in terms of like. Like a chart. Or just direction. Right, yeah. right, right. So on the more, I guess, responsiveness side, so permissive, and they give you the bullet points, right? So child-driven, rarely gives or enforces rules, overindulges child to avoid conflict. Hmm. All right. So let's, we'll break that down first. So essentially, the, 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 I, I can't say that I don't, I do know people or I have known in my life, people or parents that do kind of just don't give a shit or let their kid do whatever the sure, fuck they yeah. late as they want. They and, always, and, I, and I've actually heard something in relation to that as we well. We all know but. that. We all know that guy, that kid that could fucking stay out till three in the morning. Their parents wouldn't even know. Right. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like we oh, all yeah. hung out or had that, that, that person Where, hang out with I us. I had a friend's parents actually tell him, or as I should say more so just his mom, where as long as, you know, it was, fortunately, she she kind of had that rule of, like, as long as I have an idea of where you're at, like, who you're hanging out with, but it was essentially, as long as you don't end up in a ditch dead, you're cool. Yeah. What? And as a teenager, you're like, really? Mm. Oh, oh, okay. So, so if you're if you're doing, so essentially, the child was running the relationship. Right. Right. So that's... You know, I do, and I do know. I can, I can, I can kind of back that one myself because, uh, in not just in terms of his existence and explanation, I agree with those bullet points because I do definitely know people like that where I'm like, you know, or yeah. I've known, I've known people and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, fucking, are you serious? Like, he's like, yeah. he's not. Uh, they're not in jail. You should be at least grounding them. Tuck and take their phone. Do something. Right. Like, yell or you know, raise your voice a little yeah. bit. Something. Yeah. That's exactly. you know. And I guess, you know, sometimes for me, my mind, because I'm in the movies, will just probably wander to something like Bender from uh, uh, from The Breakfast Club. Oh, yeah. You know, in terms of the way, like, he talks about his parents. His his parents are so disassociated with what's going on, except for, unfortunately, the, the abuse part. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately for that. The, yes, yes. The this cigarette burns or the cigar right. burns. Very you unpleasant. Know, but but that just enforces the disassociation where they only care about their kid when they want to basically do harm. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's the, or we're, we're that, going deep psychologically. Yeah. That's and, well, yeah. the, that's their that's either that. This is more the permissive is the avoiding conflict. You know, right. basically always wanting to please your kid uh, or let the kind of you like, want oh, you for breakfast, you them. Can yeah, have candy right. for breakfast, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, or you could probably you could say that that's you're like Big Daddy. Remember the movie Big Daddy? Oh yeah. When he first gets like the first, he talks, you know, where you can just do whatever you want. The overindulgence, right? And see where it gets you. And you don't I, like I, your name? I'll call yeah. you Frankenstein. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's... But you, you can see where that's a that's a logical progression of where that would probably end up. Where you got to go. All right, I got to take an action. You know, but some parents never do, and it's unfortunate. Uh, all right, next one. Authority, authoritative, solves problems together with child, sets clear rules and expectations. Open communication and natural consequences. So here's the thing: authoritative. Um, 
does for me does not the way at least in the description that the sound of authoritative as a style it seems less what they're describing here yeah that that, that doesn't seem to match up right for what they're saying yeah. what it's it, supposed it to threw be me off because it, i was like oh is that we're going to be the like you know ultra strict and then you know and when yeah. and, but wait when we get down to the when we get to the last one okay it, it'll make sense but at when I got to that point, it made more sense to me why they chose gotcha. to make it that work. Okay, certain terms for certain things. Okay, but it just okay. stood out at me like authoritative, authoritative, like, you know, it just feels real strong in right. terms of its delivery. Super but, strict, if you will. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, if you can be like that all the time, more power to you. I know that as a human being, I'm. there are times where I... I could set clear rules and expectations and whether or not they're followed is different. And what, how my response to how they did or did not follow is, yeah. is also important. Like, I think it's a, it's so, some of that is multi-level, yeah. like where you could, you could set an expectation, but doesn't have to be followed through. But then there mm-hmm. are pl- plenty of, excuse me, where, Hey, this needs to be done before anything else is done. And if it's not done, there's right. problems, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, I don't so think it's quite as okay. easy to put put parenting into a specific, you know, like four bubbles like this. But no, it's not right. really. But so on the demandingness side, neglectful, okay, uninvolved or absent provides little uh, nurture or guidance, uh, indifferent to child's social, emotional, and behavioral needs. Now, that's obviously a shitty parent. Now, right. That sounds a little bit more like Bender Bender situation. Yeah, that's more yeah. that's that's more the better than the than the overindulgent. Actually, maybe the overindulgent is uh, Claire. 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 Yeah. Claire. 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 I will. I won't say certain phrases because that's outdated. But it's it's outdated. <laughs> it's outdated, but it's good for the place it was. You know, it's it well, works for what it's what it was. No, what it was dude, and when it was still one of my favorite all time movies. So don't even. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll fight. We'll fight? Well, no, I don't want to fight over Breakfast Club because I love it. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on then. Watch your tone. (laughs) Oh, excuse me. (laughs) Excuse me. Yes. Or I'm going to get authoritative on your ass. Oh, shit. Yeah. uh, All right. So that's, so the uninvolved or absent provides little, you know, nurture or guidance. So that's obviously a, that's obviously a parent who doesn't give a shit. Or not really a parent. They're like... I legally have to like make sure there's food in the house and that you have a house and maybe clothes. Yeah, and you're not. But but you're on your own. Your teeth are falling out of your face. But yeah. yeah. Well, in, in, and even then, it's probably a fine line on some of that stuff where it's like, hey, did you brush your teeth? And as you're walking out the room, and you don't even hear the answer or, or really pay attention to what they did. Yeah. So, okay. All right. And so, and the final one is authoritarian. Authoritarian, and that is parent driven. Uh, sell, uh, sets strict rules and punishment, one-way communication with little consideration of child's social, emotional, and behavioral needs. Now, that is a different kind of abuse. So, what yeah. I see here is that in some form or fashion, uh, you have permissive, neglectful, and uh, authoritarian as the more abusive one. So, if you don't uh, or the more judgmental side, looking at right, like, right. You know, this is the way you are as a parent. And if you don't fit into uh, the uh, authoritative parent bubble of the problem solving, and this is great communication, everything works out. Oh yeah. Um, then you're somehow doing it wrong. So when I saw the reason I brought this up is because you know, and I, I wanted to see your reactions on them. Does the uh, authoritarian uh, authoritarian I cannot speak tonight yeah, apparently uh, not. make sense in relation to uh, uh, authoritative uh, territory? Let, let me actually just see him. T t t t t t t t t for tat. So I think the point I wanted to make was, and it's the same bullshit with like putting people into four quadrants. You know, four four. Yeah, I've never it's... understood people and being a parent is far more complicated than that. And I want to tell you that right. if you know people or around people that put you in bubbles like that, uh, uh, and especially if they don't even know you, you walk the fuck away from those people yeah, they, altogether. You don't need to be lumped into just one category for everything that's being yeah. done. If there's one thing, and we've said it multiple times on this show parenting is ebb and flow man there, yeah. there, there's no reason why it should be 
this is this is the way you parent, so this is the way you have to be. I, no, here's 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 what this is. This is being a parent split into four. But when you put them together, you have probably a more uh, realistic view or uh, uh, because you know, even the the one parent, pet- they all go together. I mean, listen, I'm not saying that either or good or bad, except for the you know talking. But there are times where. You might have to be the child driven. You might have to overindulge to well, make a point I wasn't, or even do something. Say, I was making sure I was using the right term. I wanted to double check your chart here. The, the neglectful. Mm-hmm. If parenting is done right, like what you're saying and what I agree with, is it kind of a combination of all these? The neglectful is not being, your child is not being neglected. It's a, there are times where it's just like, you need to be on your own in a situation, not living wise but there are situations where it's like kicking the baby bird out of the nest where it's just like no this is a life experience you have to i'm still here for when you need me Mm -hmm. but i'm not just sitting there going good luck with that and walking away yeah well you you know i mean you you get you understand what i'm saying and a a lot of these are are a lot of these i think and these four parenting styles as it is uh um are probably more based through the lens of like a, a smaller child as opposed to maybe like a preteen or a teenager. Well, Although I, I will say that, I mean, it can go for either or. Being sure. a parent, parent's a parent. You're just going through different stages and you kind of have to go with it. But I, there are times where you could be any one of those things all at the same time. You could Very be, much so. You could care, but be like, I'm tired of this shit. You know, okay. you could be like, I could do something, but they need to do it themselves. And if I tell them how to do it, they're uh, just they're they don't just, argue. They won't want to do it, yeah. or or if they, they even they, if they do it, like I have to. It's not even that if it's something I need to show them. That's great. Teach them. That's great. Yeah. But you know, if it's something that I have to go through, I sometimes it's not always that easy, and you have to be creative. Yeah. In trying to get things across, you know, at this point in time, I'm just my creativity is to just sit down and have a conversation. Well, with, like like I was bringing, I was bringing up earlier with uh, the situation with Logan. Yeah. There's yeah. something happening. I, I don't want to say it's dire, but it's something where it's it's the social chaos that is elementary school and how kids react and treat other kids, whether they're trying to be hurtful or not or whatever. And trying to explain to him, you know, just be like, hey, man, if this is the case, this is the better way to approach it. Oh, I don't want to talk yeah. about it right now. It like, I mean, like my eight year old is seriously like already a teenager for like, dude, I'm just trying to tell you. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not shaking my finger, but I'm saying like, bro, this is the better yeah. approach. L- learn, learn the communication yeah. part of this. Well, I, and that's, and I think that that's an important thing to end off with is that the, there is no right way. like. You right. try yeah, if you yeah, yeah. if you gen if you love your kids and you show them that you love them uh, and you know that's the one thing for me it's I'm a genuine believer and I've probably said and I know I've said it a thousand times now absolutely uh, is to never let I never I try not to let my kid go to bed mad or let her or let them think that I, I'm mad at them you know yeah. it I I I genuinely try to if if I try to if not not fix it if I can't. Is yeah. to get on a level of understanding that she knows that I love her, so that no matter what's happening, that that they know that I'm always there, and we, I think that e- that's even important. if we're uh, unfortunately even if we're having to end or if I'm having to end an evening with and say in an argument of some type or still just being like, dude, it's just time to go to bed. We can talk more tomorrow or figure right. it out. Regardless, it is always I love you. Good night. Yeah. Sleep well. I will be here for you tomorrow. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, it's always that conversation, regardless of what type of argument or who's mad at who. That is yeah. how I end the night. Just making sure that my child understands yeah. that. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's all you can do because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to get upset. You're going to get impatient. Absolutely. You might yeah. even get a little indifferent at times, like, oh, this shit again. Oh, you know absolutely. What I mean? like, absolutely. You know, yes, and you just yes. go, oh, care you know like and, yeah. and that doesn't make you bad or anything that just makes you human right so don't let anybody put you into a box uh and say that yeah, this that, is what like, you like are. i get why you brought up those four categories but at the same time when you sit there and be like you're trying to break it down into four ways like that you're like that is fucking stupid people, people are far more complicated than that and it's like we said as long as you let them know that you love them i teach my kid too 
families fight. Sometimes we say awful things, but we're there for each other. And, and, and that doesn't just have to be blood. That's whoever you consider family. And the real ones right. are ones where that can happen. And you know, it doesn't matter. You yeah, still exactly. love each other. The less complicated of things to wrap up the show, if you go to gypodcast.com, listen to this episode, multiple other episodes. I hate to end it that way because we were having a great conversation, but unfortunately we are at time. Mm. So that's why I did my little segue, but I'm going to have to explain Papa, myself. Papa, got, Papa has to get the fuck home. Papa has to get the fuck home. But also, I mean, again, as you know, we, we have our old man tangents and we could go on forever like this, but that's... Again, why I say if you go to the website, check out all the shows where we do talk about these subjects. We've, t- we, I mean, th- this is in like this this last little bit, especially we've talked about this so many times. I I talked about it multiple times when I was doing this show solo. It's it's where we stand as a parent that the ebbs and flows of parenting will always be continuous. Is is really the only way to put it. So. Listen to this episode. Get ready for the holidays, guys. We are going to have some fun stuff coming up with Richmond, Virginia Comic Con mm-hmm. at the Richmond Raceway on November 19th. Thanksgiving, Christmas, all the holidays. There are like 200 holidays in between everything. Unfortunately, I, I'm not familiar with the holidays, so I will say a, a first happy holidays to all of you that yes. celebrate. We're getting ready for some yep. fun times, though. Happy Christmaca. Christmaca. Ha- I don't even know anymore, man. That's why I just happy holidays. I, I think yeah. it just works for everybody and, and happy so, happy time of celebration. There, you, that's that's a good one too. Yeah. And if somebody's upset about that, kiss my grits. That's right. But uh, <laughs> so guys, hey, my testicles. That's man. right. Whoa, whoa. Well, I mean, oh, there, there you go, getting all crazy again, just like at the beginning, you know. I am. I'm getting so, a little crazy. But uh, <laughs> you cut that out. That no. Nope, nope, no. We we don't edit much in this show. Radio edit. Radio. But guys, again, gypodcast.com. Check out all the shows. Catch up on all of our older episodes. We would appreciate it. And of course, if you just click right there and go to our friends at T Public, start now. Again, holiday season coming up. Good time to buy some gifts. And what a great way to do that with buying all that GUI merch that you can get with shirts, coffee mugs. Uh, onesies for them little ones that are uh, able to fit into some stuff now and not just the diapers and the wee babies and uh, whatever it may babies. be. So, the kids, wee babies. Kids at Christmas time. That's right. No, there's still the magic is still alive for them when they still believe in Santa. It's still, it's pretty good. You are lying to them, yes. But, right. as long but as it, you make it fun. But it's part of the fantasy and then you will find the right time to talk about what that fantasy was and why you did it and yeah. have to explain the truth. Yeah, you can deal with it in therapy later when you're That's older. right, yeah. Oh, the, the therapy dollars that'll be coming down the road. That's right. But guys, uh, thank you very much for joining us here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Go out, watch Wakanda Forever. As you know, we're big uh, MCU fans. We're really looking forward to this next story. Yep. Uh, we want to hear what you say, of course. Feel free to write back to us. Check us out on Facebook. We're on the Instagram, of course. Uh, Geek Fathers GUI. Twitter, yeah. Geek Father One, I believe, is still the handle. Man, I, I got to go back and double check my notes again. At yeah. Geek Father One, the number one there at the end. But all the social media stuff, yeah. I'm trying to be better about it now that we're off yeah. hiatus. You're the you're, back in the swing of things. I might be at the tech guy, but you're the social guy. I am you're the, the social media social guy. Man. I, I'm so social, bro. You're so social. So social. For like an old that. man, you're so social. Oh, jeez. That's right. That's going to be a great time to end it, guys. So thank you very much. One tribe, one village, all together, guys. Just don't forget to join us. Or cry. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I'm Lowdown. I'm F.U. Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. GUIPodcast.com <laughs>